<laughs> okay. Hey, Cynthia Allen here from Future Life Now, along with the founder of Future Life Now, Larry Wells, and uh, Mark Davis, creator of In the Fight to Get Fit. We're super excited to be with you today because uh, many of you know that we're in the middle of opening Larry's NLP Success 2023 program, a certification and immersion program in neuro linguistic programming, which is perfect for coaches, body workers, teachers, leaders, managers, um, even sales people, you will see use it. But probably most of our audience is in the realm of coaches and uh, teachers and uh, uh, trainers, personal body workers, those kinds of things like Feldenkrais practitioners as well. And uh, we just released today this incredible bonus that's going to be part of that program from Delmar Davis. And we're going to be telling you a little bit more about that in a moment. But I'd just... Uh, I'd just like to get us started in a little bit of a conversation with each other about, you know, what is it about the big M marketing that people say over and over that they hate to do. And yet when, when people get the just right message, they feel heard and they are so appreciative. So why is it that, on the give, the giving end, I would call it the giving end of marketing. It's such a different experience often than on the receiving end. What do you think, Delmar? Yeah, the thought leaders that I talk with and uh, work with on this, Cynthia, uh, have really strong feelings. It seems to uh, poke something at a very deep level in two different ways. One, there's the shadow side of this thing called sales and marketing, which is that we've all seen uh, how it's uh, done with, with you know, self-interest and uh, snake oil around it. Also though, whenever we flip around trying to represent something that we genuinely wanna share with the world, it uh, exposes all of our vulnerabilities about it. And uh, so, I use a little um, NLP language shifting when I'm working with folks on this to say, let's throw out the concept of sales and marketing period. What if we had this thing we call UGA? <laughs> now, the, the function of this thing called UGA is that you have something that's truly of value to share with the world that will touch and transform and heal lives. And you've spent your whole uh, life studying it and it's aligned with your mission and your values and your purpose and what you're here to do. And what if doing this thing called UGA, you just authentically appeared in the world as you are um, transparently uh, sharing your gifts and what you have to offer so that you could find people that uh, fit hand in glove with you and have been looking for you their whole lives. Would you be interested in that? Like, oh, sure. Well, it's called marketing. <laughs> but we don't have to use that term, right? And then the other whole side of it, good Lord. I mean, uh, NLP is the best set of tools I've ever found for exposing the thought viruses, uh, the the identity uh, uh errors and all of the misalignments in the logical levels that make it difficult for us to tell the world about who we are and how we can help and what we really care about. I love that, Mark. I love that. I know, I know Larry loves Uga because that's just like, <laughs> it's, it's totally on Larry's dad joke side. <clears throat> but I want to, I want to add something to it too, which is I started saying about two or three years ago, that I wanted to hear Feldenkrais practitioners, because that's a, a lot of who I talk with, I wanted to encourage them to quit even telling themselves that they didn't like marketing, because we market all day long, every single one of us. We market when we're trying to get our kids to eat vegetables. We market when we want to get our spouse to get ready for a great date night out. We, whether we know we are branding ourselves or not, we are branding ourselves. So maybe our style is to look sort of like disheveled and ready to just go anywhere in the world, like a puffball in the wind, or maybe it's somebody really put together. Um, 
either one of those is branding, they're marketing. And then I, I had this recent experience that Larry's been hearing me talk about, and I'm just going to share a little bit about it because I just think it's such a powerful example of why we should try to release our fear around marketing. We had this, this young boy, this young man on our street who has been living in his car 12 hours a day while it runs tw for 12 hours a day for the last two years along our street. He moves to different places. He sleeps in his house at night with his parents and the other kids and then comes out and spends the day in his car. Now, <clears throat> this is painful to watch, to be honest. And I've been trying to, all this time, I've been trying to figure out how to make a connection. Well, why? Because it's painful for me to watch and I don't want his life to unfold like this. So I introduced myself, tap on the window, introduce myself, find out his name, ask his age, which I'm pretty sure he lied to me about. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and then months go by and he's still there. And this year I said, I can't stand it. I got it. I got to try harder to make a connection. And that is marketing, right? Mm -hmm. I got I This young man needs something from us. So <clears throat> I start the process of saying, hey, Joe, would you go for a walk with my dog and I this morning? And he says, oh, oh, no, ma'am, I can't go right now. I'm trying to finish this. And he holds up his doobie. <laughs> I said, okay, well, maybe tomorrow. I got you, ma'am. I got you. I, 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 I got you. So the next day, <clears throat> he says, oh, I'm in the middle of this game. I'm right now. I can't quit. I'm in the competition on this game on my smartphone. I said, okay, okay. But he says, I'm going to do it with you. Now, normally he doesn't park in front of our house every morning, but that week he parked in front of our house every morning. What does that tell me? He's not really wanting to get away from me. He's letting me know he doesn't really want to get away from me. Mm -hmm. And then we have a date that we think we're going to make it and our dog gets sick and I have to take him to the vet. And the rhythm got interrupted, right? I couldn't fulfill the message. And then the next day, he was committed and something changed in his household. And now he's coming out at night and he's in the house during the day. And I suspect maybe his grandfather is sick and he's having to help out during the day. So now we've lost the rhythm and now I got to figure out where to pick it back up. But people, this is marketing. It's marketing done with heart, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know whether we'll connect or not. But I'm hoping still, regardless, he will know that somebody in the world cares about him, right? Hmm. So that's what we're doing in work like ours, isn't it? We're caring about people. Well, I, you know, the thing I want to say is, of, of course, that's why I do what I do. If I didn't feel that sense of, of call of making, you know, making life better, I, I talk about, the, uh, you know, the my trainers talked about creating a world to which people want to belong hmm. and the, and i love that on the one hand on the other hand it sounds so sort of external like it's out there when in reality what i want them to do is discover a world in which they do belong and which hmm. is what their real them their you know their whatever you want to call it their psyche their soul their spirit or whatever wants to produce for them, through them, in them. And that's why we do what we do. And uh, it's, it, it's not like I've got this thing I want to sell you so much as it is. I think this is the difference between a kind of life and a kind of death. Hmm. I mean, it's, 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 it's not ultimate physical death, but it's certainly not the life of the life that you're meant to have and that's available to you. And, and all, all three of us deal and address those kinds of issues. Hmm. You know? I, I want to remind people that we're on StreamYard, which means that in the comments on Facebook, it says you can register your name. And that just lets us know when you make a comment, like somebody said, I love this, so perfect, that we would know who said that right now. It just says Facebook user. We'd love to hear from you. We will take your questions during this time if you have questions. Otherwise, 
we're just going to have a conversation with each other about this topic that we think is so important. So Delmar, did, can NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, actually uh, help you be better at marketing for yourself? Or was it only that it helped you to be a better coach? Or is there a difference? The, the set of tools, Cynthia, mm -hmm. that we think of as NLP are uh, the most effective that I've found for immediate change around uh, beliefs, values, identity, uh, communication. And I studied a bunch of coaching systems, you know, previous to being in wellness and life and business coaching. I was an HR executive for a couple of pretty big companies. So I was just trained in all these uh, forms of, um, you know, coaching for improved performance and all these different uh, modalities of personal development, I think of them, right? But the NLP tools uh, work in two ways. I've never found a more effective system for how to be uh, better at communicating and really understanding, we call it the surface structure and the deep structure, the deep structure of language and the impact that it has. So that's outward, right? But then the inward side of it are what are, are my obstacles and blocks to telling my story and to exposing myself to the vulnerability of the uh, marketplace. And you haven't lived till you've had Facebook trolls. I, I, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> my favorite one was I put a video out uh, once and the, the comment was a guy looks kind of like the Jack Nicholson Joker in Batman. <laughs> I left that one up because I, I, I keep that as a compliment. But, <laughs> but the vulnerability that we face, you know, uh, we all, um, all of us were moved at some point in our lives to move, to, to go toward the helping professions, you know, to become uh, facilitators of other people's healing uh, hopes, uh, dreams to help them get the, the lives that they want, right? And so we have something to offer and then the question turns for many of us to how do I get paid to do that? <laughs> let alone, let alone another leap. How do I make a living? How do I pay my mortgage do it, to do that? Or how do I achieve uh, a lifestyle of total uh, freedom for doing that? And the toolbox that's served me, in fact, I was stuck. You guys know my story, but I was literally stuck in both my job and transitioning out of my job and NLP and my uh, work with my dear friend, Larry, is what gave me the, uh, the clarity and the tools and the personal power to be able to do that. Yeah, that uh, uh, leads me to, an, uh, to a question that, that's uh, of interest to me. Uh, when we first met, uh, you were this executive uh, over a, within a large organization and you were trying to to transition to something <laughs> and <laughs> and and of course as a NLP practitioner I didn't need to investigate what that something was just the idea that you were stuck and how you, and you had this session you've told this story a number of times you had this session with me and got unstuck in that, that first session and then signed up. I'm kind of interested in knowing sort of the uh, sort of what was going on in between. Once you got unstuck, uh, there obviously was some preparation. I mean, you just didn't walk away from your job and step into your own business. Uh, well, maybe it's not that obvious. <laughs> maybe I should ask that question. Was it that simple as, okay, I quit. I'm going to do this. But I have a hunch that it wasn't quite that way. And so it, I'm curious. it wasn't. It wasn't quite that way. But there are, there are two fronts along which that moves. Right. Uh, one is the inner preparation for it. Yes. And, and you were a partner to that. So it was uh, in... In uh, the tools that I learned from NLP certification, that I got the clarity and the wherewithal to not only know what I was moving away from, but what I was moving toward. 
Right. Okay. So if you f- if we align those levels of organization within us, mm-hmm. we know the North Star and we start marching. There you go. Well, as Cynthia can well attest, having the will and having the skill are two different things. <laughs> <laughs> My fellow, I say that with the deepest respect. Cynthia is a, a, a fellow, um, a fellow online professional marketer of of, uh, of services and and healing arts, and and uh, that has its challenges. And so she and I relate over that. Um, and so uh, I pretty much, um, I did quit. I quit a job. I was so clear about where I wanted to go, that I left a position with a company at a stage uh, in life that no no rational human being would ever do. It's not like I got downsized. It's not like I got a package. I quit. All I had to do was shut up and keep showing up for another decade. And I would have, you know, retired quite nicely. I mean, I was, you know, mid-level HR exec with a big company that was great and treated me with great respect, and I was having success with it. But I was so called to move in this direction. And then, uh, and so I quit. And I spent, uh, oh, at least a year in this office, uh, going quietly insane, wondering why nothing I did worked. (laughs) And you know what, Um, seeing how it's done, and actually doing it in terms of designing and creating a a business structure, figuring out the problem that you solve for who, how to get paid to do it, how to tell, how to identify the ideal person that you can help, how to invite them in, how to uh, move them along toward participating with you and uh, finally to uh, buy something from you and then to stay with you. That's a set of skills. Those are that's at the skill capability and skill level. It's got to be supported by the belief and values. But you got to have you got to have the skills to do that. And, uh, yeah, what I what I discovered um, to to my uh, it was sincerely my surprise was that I actually loved that stuff. I, I, I was scared of marketing. I didn't hate it. I was scared of it. But once once I really uh, got what it was and how it worked and, and brought all of my creativity and resources, you know, as, as we would say, Larry, all of my parts showed up for it and I brought recovered all of my resources for it. I found that it's just a, a venue, an exciting venue of creative expression, like all the other aspects, like coaching is for me, like NLP is for me. I mean, you trained me in a bunch of foundational tools. Now I use the principles and more like play jazz with yeah. it. I invent stuff. I do processes that I've never tried before or have existed before. I sit with a client and go, hey, let's try this. See, see what happens, right? So I found a, a love for that. But um, you too, you too can, you know, successfully market your own business with a few years of training and tens of thousands of dollars <laughs> in tuition and um, and costs and costly. <laughs> no. No failures, only feedback. But some of that feedback yeah. is a lot of money. <laughs> well, the one thing that you, you've just said is that, uh, and I don't know how much audiences have seen of some of the stuff that we did, but you're talking about these logical levels and you get the, you get the, the vision, the mission, the identity. But that doesn't mean that you don't have to change behaviors and develop some new capabilities. The, you know, the, the higher levels are the motivation and the power that gives you the freedom to do that and, and to make that kind of happen. So you have to change behaviors and you have to do some capabilities. And sometimes that calls for a different mindset. And for a long time, I was one of those people who hated the word, you know, the thing sales mm-hmm. because, uh, because my perception at that time was that salespeople want you to buy something that you don't need. And, right. and that's not, that's not what we do. I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't know about you with, with what, you know, how you think about this in terms of what I'm offering is something that, that really brings benefit and life to those that take it. 
but I don't have the ability nor the desire mm. to get people to buy something they don't want. Right. It's, it's the, it's, this is what we have to offer. And if that's, a, if you can perceive the value of that, come. Because uh, all of us know that, uh, you know, if, I, if I'd had that opportunity earlier in my life than I did, I would have jumped at it. Yeah. I mean, because it just has meant so much for me. Delmar, I'm, I, you actually, I mean, building the online practice that you have in the fight to get fit um, has been one thing. But really before that, you were able to build your coaching practice from a very part-time thing to a full-time thing that supported your family. Can you say something about how um, how you used NLP in, in your private practice? And did you use the same marketing skills actually in the end, some very similar ones? Or how, how did that work for you? Yeah, the, uh, the, the path was a little more circuitous in there because I had a little detour um, participating in a startup mm -hmm. in there. So it's kind of like, I had, I'm, I'm a trained body worker, as you know, I, I clinical massage right. therapist and, uh, and uh, certified uh, fitness trainer, right? So that practice I, I was uh, growing and I had started using all of these principles that are a set of NLP tools, again, about removing resistance to doing the things that we know we should do and want to do for our good health. And happiness like people know they should exercise get a little more movement right uh, all of my clients all of my uh, ideal clients are smart educated know this know what they want to be doing but part of them wants to and part of them doesn't and they're stuck so that was the the practice that i was growing then i went away and did a startup for a bit and then i came back and launched what we call what i call now and the fight to get fit, and the fight to eat right, and the forthcoming, and the fight to change, which is about applying those principles to any life change, which you're going to uh, see announced here in the next couple months. Right. So the, the NLP principles worked uh, a number of ways. First off, just keeping my head straight about all of that and, and my own alignment and clarity you know, frankly, that's a life's work, capital L, capital W, right? But secondly, I, I think I, I mentioned this in our conversation the other day, having the tools for how to use uh, language and change representations for people visually, auditorially, and sensorily, right? Almost confers an unfair advantage <laughs> in everything. And so what, what I came to find though, Cynthia, is that as I got more trained, as I became a certified a copywriter, and I spent a year long in, in uh, certification of this whole business coaching model, I already had most of those tools for how to communicate with influence and to help people clarify their own uh, thinking, you know, what do they want? What don't they want? You know, here's how to, fr here's how to frame up a coaching uh, um, objective, like, what do you want more of? What do you want less of in order to what? I mean, that's that's how simple this stuff. I want more blank without blank in order to blank. Yeah. Exactly. And all that came from NLP. And when I could help people frame that up, there was only one question that they had. It's, can you help me with this? And I go, yeah. And they go, how do I sign up? I mean, that's, <laughs> that was, yeah. I, mean, I built a practice. I mean, it was, you want to talk about lack of pitch or lack of selling? It's like, oh, sounds like you want this in order to that. Um, I got a few tools mm -hmm. and they go, can we do that? And I go, yeah, let's start Tuesday. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's it. I've never had a sales conversation. Lovely. I love that. <laughs> so we're really excited this year because um, this is uh, several years in a row now that Larry has offered his NLP success immersion and certification <laughs> program. So we're excited to have for the first time ever a bonus from you. And this bonus is called how to build a successful and fulfilling coaching practice without an MBA or marketing degree. Wow. Is that what we called it? That's, that's what we called it. Sign me up. 
<laughs> I know. I know. What doesn't this feel like the thing that you and I both wish we'd have had at the very beginning? It, it and, is. Uh, it really and, is. Yeah. yeah. And right. I just yeah. want to put this in perspective that to certify as an NLP, NLP practitioner with Larry is 100, 1887 if you pay in full but uh, at, at one time, but Delmar's bonus alone is worth 1200 sorry, 1200 all by itself. And I got to tell you, I have seen programs that cover this kind of material and it's close to 10000 20000 And actually, I pay for one of those programs for Future Life now. Uh, so I definitely know how much they cost. So I'm super excited for people to have this chance that while they're taking NLP, regardless of whether they have a Feldenkrais practice, a massage practice, uh, they're thinking about going online, that they're going to be getting some super important tools uh, in that how that you talked about, right? Those mm -hmm. that capabilities that you talked about. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's my pleasure and, and privilege to, uh, be the uh, business coach to this cohort. Um, I, I most enjoy, you know, we want to talk about like ideal folks to work with fellow working with fellow thought leaders and healers and service providers in uh, helping them be successful, sharing that with the world. Because from a, from a mission perspective, it's a multiplier for me. I mean, my in intent is to save the lives of thousands of people through transforming their health and their wellness, right? And for every fellow thought leader or healer that I can support the success of, it becomes a multiplier for me. So these are my peeps. And it's just a pleasure to share this information. And I'm just a nerd about it too. I mean, who wants to listen to me? Nobody in my family wants to listen to me. Most of my friends, it's like, I just got off this, I got the coolest call that with this guy that, that really understands the inner workings of the Facebook algorithm that nobody talks about. Let me know. Probably nobody here wants to hear about that either. So strike that, that, was, that just delete that out of this conversation. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, one of the things that that uh, that NLP, NLP did for, for me in the in and sort of along those lines is echoed sort of in the words of a of a book written by Peter Block, and uh, Peter Block was a management gu uh, guru for a long period of time. Now he lives here in Cincinnati, and he's into to. Uh, you know, com community, bringing communities together, et cetera. But the name, title of his book was The Answer to How is Yes. yes. And, and if you don't have a yes, there's nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can, and NLP has given me the yes. It is, okay, I'm willing to do what I, what I'm, I'm willing to change my behavior uh, if it fits my mission. Yeah. You know, because the mission and my purpose for, for being, and by the way, who I happen to be, you know, my own identity. Yeah. Uh, it's one thing to say that you're somebody. It's another thing. It's, it, there has to be some congruity. There has mm -hmm. to be some congruity. And, and, and the truth is, I can't live a happy life without being congruent about it. Mm. You know, yeah. so. We're here with Larry Wells, who's be offering his NLP Success 2023 program, an immersion and certification in neurolinguistics programming, and also Delmar Davis, who's offering an incredible bonus uh, course during the same time, a mastermind, really, not a course, so that we want to talk about the difference between those things how to build a successful and fulfilling coaching practice without an MBA or marketing degree. Larry's program is only open. So that means also Delmar's bonus is only open until uh, January 30th. And then everybody will start class together in February. And Delmar, it, it is a mastermind, a monthly mastermind that your bonus is. Larry's program runs in modules and you'll be meeting for several weeks in a row on, on for blocks of hours. But the uh, optional bonus is a monthly mastermind. And I think that everyone really knows what a mastermind yeah. is. 
Yeah, the, the difference, Cynthia, and it's an important one, is that we could offer something in terms of business coaching, you know, around building a coaching practice, right, that had a curriculum to it mm -hmm. or whatever. But I like much better the idea that we come together as a cohort and be able to discuss what people actually need, which part of what they need, and it becomes more conversational. I mean, I've got, um, you know, curriculum materials for every phase of, uh, of building a business practice. But the question is, what's relevant to the group? How deep does the group want to go? Uh, so a mastermind becomes much more flexible and participative, where people are are uh, sharing uh, what they what they want, what their struggles are, and we can problem solve together. So I, I was just self conscious for a minute talking about my background, because um, if anybody has any trepidation or or fear about marketing, and they've stuck their toes in those waters and you know gotten bit in some way, uh, then you know talking about what we call full stack marketing. You know, which you're a full stack marketer, uh, Cynthia, you can do everything that it takes, you know, to run the business. Um, so the idea that we're going to get in this group and and I'm going to nerd out talking about all these tools about strategy, copywriting, let's see, media buying, uh, web design, marketing automation, funnel design, designing info products, social media content management, selling and enrollment. You know, it goes on and on and on. What I'm really interested in these days is minimum viable structure, minimum viable structure. What's the least that you need to succeed with your practice mm -hmm. and to tell the world you don't need to be on all the you don't need to be tick tock and if if you don't love it, you know, you just have to find what works for you and how to tell your message. Now, I just saw I just saw one of my Feldenkrais people today. He had his shirt in his mouth. His belly was showing. He's dancing. And I thought, oh, do I need to be able to do that? <laughs> <laughs> do I need to be able to show myself like dancing and get my shirt in my mouth? Now, I got to tell you, he looked fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I would not look as nice doing that. But I, I mean, that's an example. I think of. we get scared, right? We get right. scared by what other people do naturally and do so well. Yeah, so uh, I, I was doing some some coaching with a with a uh, uh, fellow person in the in the healing arts a while ago, who's really got resistance to this, to many of the technical aspects of it. And what we discovered together was simply talking to uh, this person's network about what they're up to just kept leading to all of these other connections with organizations where they could deliver their stuff. It's like, well, there's your funnel. Talk to your friends, see what happens. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Minimum viable structure, you know? Yeah. So, so, uh, so a mastermind gives us real flexibility to say, Hey, uh, you know, barring a, a topic that somebody wants to go into, I've certainly got uh, stages that we can work through. Like, you know, just how do you frame up uh, your business for starters? You know, how do you identify the problem that you solve for whom and how? How might you get paid for that, a.k.a. productizing it or moving it into a service? I've got all that stuff kind of, you know, up my sleeve. But I'm really curious about meeting fellow practitioners where they live and having conversations that help people get unstuck and or get the skills and capabilities that they need. Mm -hmm. I really like one of the very first things on your reference list, because this is such a biggie, right? It's entrepreneurial and prosperity mindset, mm -hmm. uh, because I think so many of us actually think that we need to be broke if we're going to be serving people. But we, of course, don't want to be broke. I mean, nobody wants to be broke, but yeah. we have uh, some inner conflicts around those ideas. And then also about what it means to be an entrepreneur, which if you are a massage therapist, a Feldenkrais practitioner, you have your own PT practice, you have your own coaching, your own psychotherapeutic practice, you are an entrepreneur. Even if you think all I did was hung up my shingle, you're still an entrepreneur. And I think that's a, a can be a difficult mindset to, to grasp. Oh, it's so hard, Cynthia. I, um, 
I remember the first time I spent, I don't know, like $15,000 in two years of my life getting a really good education as a body worker. It was a big commitment becoming, you know, a licensed clinical massage therapist. I remember getting my first client who was referred from somebody that I knew. And we had a very good session. And after the session, she asked me what she owed me. And I stammered and stuttered like six sixty dollars And then my hand was shaking when I took the check. I mean, it just, you know, I we, know. We, we laugh, but, but um, foundation. Oh, raising our prices, raising our prices. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. I just, you know, yeah. I, I, I just raised my private client prices which I hadn't seen, been seeing even any private clients for several years now since the pandemic, but I started again and I realized, you know, really I haven't raised my prices in like six years. I got to raise my prices and I got to raise them quite a lot. And, you know, to be okay with just saying, Hey, my prices are, are different now. And here's what they are. Um, that's a big deal to get comfortable with. And that's, uh, that is, opening up the hood and doing the, the work that Larry does mm -hmm. because all of that stuff pokes our foundational uh, vulnerabilities around self-worth mm -hmm. and will will rattle the connections to our uh, purpose, our mission and our deep identity every single time. Yeah. Which, you know, for me though, I, I'm not, I've switched around to not seeing that as a difficulty in life, but a great opportunity. May I always participate and be doing things that rattle my deepest vulnerabilities because it exposes my life's work. And it's just wonderful. The, the reason I'm really excited to be part of the, the NLP Destiny group is that these tools have served me so well, but continuing to build those tools it, it's, um, it is truly a life's work, a bottomless well of building new resources and new uh, subtlety and capabilities with these, uh, but, but also uh, having uh, friends to explore that with is just uh, so valuable. You know, on our own, we will tend to cycle into our habitual uh, patterns of limitation, right? So having a cohort like this that uh, gives us the tools and the encouragement, you know, to, to be the most that we can be and to contribute the most is really priceless. Yeah. So you just made reference to the fact that you're actually going to go on and study the next level of NLP yeah. with Larry. You've used NLP success. It wasn't called that when you took it, I know, but you used your uh, 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 NLP practitioner certification extremely well for the last 11, 12, yeah. 13 years. I think it's more like 13. But now you've decided to do Larry's uh, NLP Destiny, which he's just offering for the first time this year. And that's a two-year program, a much bigger commitment um, in which you will become a master practitioner. And, I, and it's just great to hear you saying, I can totally see the value of that. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, funny. I'll, I'll share the conversation that we had when, when Larry told me about this, I said, well, I was about to approach you anyway and say, dude, it looks like you're not going to offer, if you're not going to offer master's uh, certification, just do it for me. I'll, I'll cut you a fat check and you, you, you train me and certify me. He said, well, actually, we're going to do an LP destiny. And I said, count me in. <laughs> yeah, great. yeah. There's, uh, you know, to, it, to say that, um, I mean, yeah, I, I've... I, I use these tools. I've embodied them at this point. You know, there's an unconscious uh, trust yeah. in those. But it would be like me saying I went to the conservatory and I studied jazz for four years and I got nothing more to learn. Well, go listen to Miles. You know, go go listen to Coltrane. There's more to learn. So, so uh, you know. The chance oh. the, the the chance to play with Larry again is uh, is uh, really wonderful. Yeah, I wanted to to say something. We were talking about the shaking as you received the check. When early on in my uh, uh, in, in my career, I, I attended a bunch of uh, you know sort of free seminars and found out I overpaid. You know? <laughs> 
<laughs> I, you know, I, I, I lost some hours, but I didn't gain any, any real stuff. And uh, I, I found that uh, it's worth, uh, you know, you know, I'm like you. I've spent lots and lots of hours in training and several thousand dollars over, uh, I, you know, each time I did it. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Well, I just want to say we got done offering a three-part live. And if you do Future Life Now's free programs, we are never about an hour or two hours of just nonstop marketing. That's not what we do. We have good oh. things to share. And um, I, I, and you go away with usable material. Now, today, what we're hoping that you go away with is understanding that you don't have to run from this term marketing, that if you, what holds you back from taking NLP success is feeling like you'll never be able to make a living with it. Uh, or you'll never be able to make a living as a massage therapist, or you'll never be able to make a living as a trainer or a coach or a Feldenkrais practitioner. We're hoping that between the three of us sitting here as examples, you will know that the answer to that is not true. You can do that. And especially if you get good support and you're not just getting support from someone who just did it for himself. Like if I were going to do a monthly mastermind for you around marketing, you would be getting it from someone who did it for themselves. And I often say, if you've been on any other calls with me is I'm not interested in being your marketing teacher. Cause I really don't feel that I have that level of training, but Delmar does have that level of training. He didn't just do it for himself. Delmar, you also actually went ahead and certified in some of these programs. Yeah, I uh, I went way deep. Um, some of you might know uh, uh, Frank Kern and, and his organization. He has one time offered a year-long certification in his uh, whole business coaching, business building model and certification in all of his direct response uh, techniques. It was like getting a master's degree in uh, creating uh, online businesses. I mean, it was it was exhausting. It was a, very expensive and it was a year of my life. And I could hang a shingle out just doing that. But my real mission is around working in the healing arts. But I love to be able to share that with other thought leaders like, you know, my I had to do an oral defense of like being able to analyze and build a funnel as big as this wall, like in the moment it says you've got a company now that's got bricks and mortars and it's got this, these shops, but it's thinking about doing info products and it's got these social media problems. What's your first recommendation? And uh, so I, I, again, I totally geek out about that and I've gotten certified in some other things too. But the real question is uh, that I'm fascinated with is, What's the minimum viable amount of any of that to use to set a person up for uh, success? So I love talking about it. I love teaching it. I love sharing about it uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's a multiplier effect. And two, every time I look at somebody else's challenge, I get better at mine. You know, <laughs> teach to learn. The old uh, cubbyism. So, uh, so I'm really excited about this. Uh, mastermind, getting a new group of friends who actually want to talk to me about this stuff. <laughs> I, mean, I, uh, I just, I, seriously, I have to like get coffee with Cynthia to find another human being, or I mean, I, I, I pay quite a bit to be in a couple masterminds, right. you know, people around the world who do what I do. Um, you know, they're really fulfilling, but uh, finding a new group to uh, who wants to talk about this and, and has uh, sincere questions and problems they want to solve. I'm excited. Yeah, I, I have to tell you, it's uh, it is lonely running your practice um, if you don't have anybody that if, if a like mindedness to talk with. So I, I do say sometimes uh, that the reason that I am in the <clears throat> in the groups that I'm in that we pay a lot of money for is almost as much for not feeling alone as it is for the actual content. Yeah. So I think it's great. So I just want to start to maybe wrap us up a little bit here. If what you're looking for is an opportunity to eliminate your thought viruses around your success, your history, your 
a trauma that you maybe have carried with you, your inability to, to connect with others in a deep way that you want to connect with others. Um, man, there is just so many ways that you can use NLP for yourself as well as in working with others, no matter what your profession is, or if you're retired and you just love studying more things and you've got grandchildren and other people, maybe your, your church that you influence, even those situations can make a big difference for you. And so that program, NLP Success uh, 2023, which Larry Wells will be leading, uh, is open now for registration and that will close in just five days. As a bonus to that, there are two bonuses to that program. One is that you get a private session with Larry, which people love their private sessions with Larry. Delmar has a story about how he came to Larry originally for one private session that got him unstuck. And you can hear that in one of the uh, videos that we have. And, and he might tell it again here just in a second, just for the for the heck of it. But um, also you get this incredible bonus, this monthly mastermind with Delmar, uh, which will allow you to get your minimal viable structure for success. I love for success as a coach, uh, practitioner, teacher, however you call yourself, really. And I think, wow, what a gift that would have been to me if I'd had that while I was taking my Feldenkrais training. Um, certainly, if I'd have had it at the beginning when I was first thinking to myself, hey, I think I'll get that your better back program off the ground and worked my behind off and one person signed up. And then I had a nine week program to offer to one person. I, I think I would have liked this back then, you know? So, uh, yeah. I, I do want to say something really quickly because of what the conversation was just a few minutes ago. I, I just want to say you too can have a background like this. All you need is a green screen <laughs> and, and X, access to a virtual background. I have this background because what's behind the green screen, I just don't want to show. Yeah, you were not trying to say that Larry is super affluent, although that would be okay to say that, but uh, it was the only green screen we could find for StreamYard at the last minute. <laughs> I was hoping Larry Larry would knock us out a little tune on the piano. That was my sincerest hope for our session today. Yeah, you and he and John McKinney would be jamming at the next coffee house together, wouldn't y'all? Uh, yeah, I did. I, yeah, I, it just occurred to me after we were talking about, about the success and stuff. Uh, you know, <laughs> making a living. But I'm in a room where I have a desk here. I have a bookcase over there that I can reach. I have a bookcase over here I can reach. And behind, anyway. That's I, an I, example. That's an example of the minimal viable structure. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Because we heard someone say to you the other day, Larry, in one of the lives that, uh, hey, I can't, um, I can't, uh, uh, I can't, um, I'm just going to answer this comment. Uh, you, you misspelled the word success. Try S-U-C-C-E-S-S, -S, and I think you'll get it. Um, the uh, Whenever you, um, where somebody wrote in and said, hey, I can't, I can't, um, I can't do it because I don't have a good space. I don't have a good space to do it in. And Larry said, hey, I don't have a great space here. I'm doing this out of a little bedroom with a green screen. So I love it. I love that. Exactly right. Yeah. So, uh, Anyway, yeah, I, I did. not want the, everybody to have the impression that uh, this is my weekend cabin <laughs> I'm sitting in here because <laughs> I've known some people who've had cabins like that. <laughs> I'm not one of them. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, so I, I oh, just, good. Uh, I'm so I, glad I, somebody just told me that 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 the link does work. Uh, she just had that. It's so easy to make a little spelling error. I'm totally get that easy to do. So listen, what a delight to talk to the two of you. I can't wait for our next opportunity to have coffee or, uh, in my case, tea with you, Delmar and Larry, because I, I, I do indeed enjoy talking about these things, uh, so that I don't feel so alone in the process. And I'm so excited about Larry's new program and I'm excited about the new monthly mastermind. Actually, Larry's two new programs, right? NLP Destiny and NLP 
Success 2023. So uh, listen, from me, it's a goodbye. You all? All right, bye. Thank you all so much. And thanks to both of you for offering uh, these programs. Uh, They've changed my well, life, changed my practice, and it's just a source of love and light in the world. And I'm so grateful. You know how it is. You cannot not do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because we do know that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. You just for some of us, it's definitely a calling, right? For some of us, it's definitely a calling. We're answering the call. Okay, everybody. Right. Thank you for hanging out with us, watching it on replay. Do let us know in the comments any questions you have. We'll try to answer them and uh, just be aware you've got five days to be able to join. And that's because we want to start everyone together in this live course so that Larry can uh, love on you right from the beginning and make sure that he takes you along the paces with everyone else. Bye bye. And I just want to say have as much fun as you can. We'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>